the development about a week ago, and it is a very nice subdivision. Congratulations. <laughs> May I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Certainly. Have you applied to the town council yet for authority to install these lights? I have not yet. That is next. Now I know we have street lights coming, so that'll be, I'll be moving forward with that. Okay. And the street has to be accepted as well by town council. Yes. And an as-built was requested? Yes, yeah, so I'm working on that with my client. Supposedly the engineers have it. Uh, I'm just trying to locate the as-built as well as get that, uh, the letter, uh, the sign-off from the land surveyor. Very good. Does anybody else have any questions of Mr. Monty or Mr. Akers? Wonderful. Excellent. Um, should we keep this um, item on the agenda for, say, April? Um, is that even necessary? What is the pleasure of the planning board on that? Do you is think we should is bring a good question? Should they bring be able to work it out at this point? It sounds like they're making good headway, correct? Yeah, I would say so. I, I think at this point, um, we would probably prefer to uh, try to resolve the outstanding issues, and then if we need to return, inform, then you can let us know. inform the administrative office, and right. that would probably be the best course of action from my perspective. Good. Can I um, ask one thing? Certainly. So in Could you please um, stand at the podium and tell us your name and address? Yes, I'm Jamie Bacon and 58 Line Road, Tiverton. I, we have not received any plowing with the snow that we have had. Um, it was our understanding that developer would be responsible for plowing until the road is ac accepted by the town. Um, we've had three or two snows. The first one wasn't really anything. It rained and it washed away. The second one, the whole road was a sheet of ice. So if we have an extensive amount of snow, like we want emergency vehicles to be able to get to our houses. So I'm hoping that somebody is holding the developer responsible for his duty to plow until the town accepts us. Thank you. Um, I will, I'll follow up with my my client uh, regarding the plowing. Um, thank you for bringing up that issue. And uh, I will be discussing that as winter still is obviously ongoing. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Monte? Uh, yeah, that, I wasn't previously informed of that. My understanding is that the developer is going to be responsible for plowing this winter. Um, so it's unfortunate to hear, but we just hope uh, he'll plow in the future. And everybody is good with um, not actually carrying this item forward on the agenda, but just waiting for either, either the homeowners or the uh, developer to say that there's a problem and we need to come back before the planning board. Agreed. Okay. Well, then, I guess the only thing to be said is good luck on resolving the last little bit of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you again. <laughs> so the next item on our agenda is um, special use permits. And you, um, you all have um, a memo from um, Todd um, mentioning that, uh, uh, or discussing the, the legal aspects of, of performance standards and of special use permit with specific and objective criteria attached. Um, and also we have um, from Ashley a number of examples of performance standards um, uh, from other states, so you've had that for a good week now. And so I'd like to call on Todd and Ashley to um, summarize their findings, if they'd like. I, 
I think, would you I like think my memo was pretty simple. I think it was simple. And <laughs> Performance simple standards are, <laughs> you're allowed to do that. You already do it. We can make it probably more concise. Uh, special use permit. I talked about some criteria there. Well, let's go back to performance standards. Performance standards, an applicant could re could request a variance to, right, which was important to know for some of you. Special use permit, special specific and objective criteria. I do not see an avenue for somebody to get a, for lack of a better term, a variance from that criteria. That's my summary if you want more Good. No, no. questions. It was very clear, thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, providing us with that. If I may, um, you say we've had this for a week. I have not had it for a week. I got it last, uh, at 6.30, I believe it was last Thursday night. And as you probably know, I, I had to come to town hall to get uh, paper copies of it. So I'd just like to bring that up uh, at the moment. And a lot to digest. I have to confess, I didn't have a chance to read it. So does, does anybody else have any, any questions or comments for, uh, for either Todd or Ashley? Um, seeing none, I think that what we're trying to do tonight um, on this agenda item is to um, make, see if we can make some decisions about how we would like to handle the special use permits, which as you know, which as you know are suspended for six months. Um, do we keep them as special use permits uh, but attach specific and objective criteria? Um, do we, uh, or do we go to performance standards um, or do we have a mixture? And there's over a hundred of, uh, there's over a hundred special use permits. If you go through the, the uh, Appendix A zoning code and then also add in the special use uh, permit table from the uh, form-based code zones, the, the uh, pedestrian friendly, the neighborhood business, and the traditional Main Street districts. So, uh, so it's quite a long list, and you all have um, you all have the uh, table, and they've had this for at least a week. Rosemary, this, this I know, this I know about, uh, and uh, it's a bear to go through. I know, but um, I I'd like to start with asking the planning board if they have any thoughts on special use permits that. Are, um, are so um, unobjectionable that we could actually make those uses by right. So we would change them from an S in the table, an S meaning special use permit is needed. And up until recently, you had to go to the zoning board for that, um, to a P, which means it's permitted by right. So does anybody, has anybody uh, if you've had the time to flip through this, does anybody have any thoughts or suggestions about um, uses that are that are very non-controversial and that we could simply make um, permitted by right? And, and I also um, um, would welcome any comments that uh, Ashley and Todd may have on that. If you have some thoughts about what we could do, I I I, I could only come up with about four suggestions, but does anybody else have any suggestions? Um, yes. I don't necessarily have a suggestion, but I have more of a philosophical thought in, in looking at this. And, 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 you know, yet again, I'm going to hold the General Assembly responsible for this because I think at the end of the day, we're probably or, or I think we're going to end up with a lot of no's to a lot of things that we might otherwise have been able to allow. And I think that's because when I look at both the performance standards and the special use permits, you know, let's take the, the um, 
you know, if you take the specific and objective criteria for special use permits and you actually look at the examples, which are very good examples, but that is clearly weighted to help the developer with deep pockets because many of those things are going to require, you know, expert testimony, right? Expert testimony of a traffic engineer that's going to tell you, because they always do, that it's not going to be any problem. Expert testimony of a sound guy who's going to tell you, oh, this isn't going to go above the decibel levels. That's what's going to happen. And we're not going to be in a position as a municipality to be able to afford our own litany of expert witnesses every time this happens to be able to, you know, to, to be able to say no when, when we know it's not going to work. So the, the whole structure of the kind of, um, the kind of specific objective and criteria, uh, objective criteria, it, not in all cases, but in a great many cases, is going to rely on expert testimony. And that's going to be a huge problem. And then, you know, as far as the performance standards go, while they aren't in our zoning court code now, we have a whole slew of performance standards. They just happen to be in the regular municipal code. And I will say that based on my experience on for the years on the Conservation Commission and four years on the council, is that they're virtually unenforceable. I, I mean, I could list for you, you know, there are performance standards around dust, there are performance standards around vibration, around noise, uh, um, uh, you know, all kinds of things. And I, I can tell you that 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 after the fact, it's almost impossible. I could name three or four things where the Tiverton and police for years go out on a semi-regular basis with their decibel gun, right, because there's something that's enormously noisy and either it doesn't register or they're not there when the noise goes on. And this stuff just drags on for forever. So, I mean, it's sad to say, but I think that I think that the better thing is to try and look at these uses and, and look at the ones that to say, we really do want to have an opportunity for that. And the other ones, make them no's because either we won't be able to say no to somebody because we won't be able to fight the, the expert testimony because we don't have the money to hire our own experts. Or the performance standards, they'll come in and they'll say, oh no, this isn't going to have any vibration. Oh, it's not going to have any dust. Oh, it's not going to disturb the neighbors. You know, and then once they're in and it's loud or noisy or dusty or it smells, then it becomes an enforcement nightmare. And, you know, there's nothing you do about it. It's these, you know, they just fester along for years and years. So that's my thought. So are you, su <coughs> are you suggesting that we um, stick with the a special use permit um, rather than going to performance standards and just as philosophically as a general statement. I, I, I think, I mean maybe, but I, what I think I'm saying is that we should pick through this list and, and identify the ones that we think are really important, we'd really like to have. Because there are some of them that are in there that are probably like six of one, half a dozen the other. Do we really care if we have one of these in town? You know, under the old model, it would have been fine to say yes, because we have a way to let the, you know, let the neighbors participate in the decision and, you know, does it fit with the comprehensive plan and all that? We don't anymore. So my suggestion is we pick through the ones that we think are really important, that there's an opportunity for them to be here, and then you know, craft the, craft the use as carefully as we can, right? The definition of that as carefully as we can. And then, you know, work with Ashley or Todd to say, do we do this one as a special use? Do we do it as a performance standard? Here's where we're trying to get to. But I think that, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sorry this is how I feel about this, but I completely laid this at the lap of the General Assembly for, I think, you know, a really short-sighted approach to, um, you know, to, to things that might need an exception in the zoning code. I have a thought. <clears throat> My concern with that, Trish, is that if the use is not listed, right, they, they can then apply to the zoning board for a special use permit. Unless we put them all on the, on the not use, on the not They're list. To identify everything. Well, we can, we can identify the ones that are there now that we just, we'll just put them on the not list. 
I mean, my hope is that someday we're not going to be the only community in this mess, that someday the General Assembly will rethink their position on this. And maybe then things will change, but until they do. Well, I think, you know, I don't have good good answer. I think you raise, you know, good points. Um, part of the trouble that we're having, and not just here in Tiverton, but everywhere, is that there's different interpretations of how this language gets applied at the local level. Um, you know, can you get a variance? Some say yes, some say no. Um, can you apply additional standards above and beyond what are this what the specific and objective criteria are? Some are saying no, some are saying yes. That's all going to get litigated. We don't know what the right answer is until a judge decides. Um, you know, obviously, you have a solicitor. He's kind of made a determination, at least on one part of that, that if it's a specific and objective criteria, um, that's not available for a variance. And I understand the reasoning behind that. Um, you know, I've spoken with other solicitors, and we've had this, we're having having lots of philosophical conversations about like what the intent here was, and how is this going to you know, how is this all going to play out? And the reality of it is, is that, you know, the, the standard is that when it goes to, to a court, you know, it's, it's, it's ruled in favor of the property owner. So if that ruling is, you know, that yes, you can get a variance because it benefits the property owner or no, you can't apply additional criteria because that doesn't benefit the property owner. I mean, we don't know how this is all going to come down. Um, my concern is if you take a more conservative reading of it, I agree with, with Todd. I, I don't think that the intent here was to design this so that these specific and objective criteria are like just a mere suggestion and you can get variances from them and you can add to them and take away from them. And, it, you know, I think the intent was this is a basically a box checking exercise you either have it or you don't have it the one thing that i can't reconcile in my mind is that if the intent was to be a box checking exercise why did you assign it to a zoning board you don't need five people to check the box it should have been an administrative function if the idea is you either meet the, the standards or you don't that's an administrative review there's no need to send that to a committee of five to see if five people agree that your boxes are checked. If they can't waive the standard and they can't add additional standards, why are they even in front of the zoning board? So I'm not 100%, like I'm, I don't know, none of us really know for sure what the answer to this is, <coughs> but if you take a rigid interpretation that you can't get a variance, I think that's problematic. I, I don't disagree with the, the reasoning behind why you might rule that way or might interpret it that way, but I think that's problematic for special use permits. And the other piece of it is if you can add additional standards, what are we doing? Like, what is the purpose of all of this? Why are we going through this exercise of writing all these things down when we all recognize that a drive through is not a drive through? It's a different type of drive through in a different location, on a different road, on a different piece of property, and it shouldn't have the same criteria and standards um you know i know that that's not that doesn't answer anyone's questions mm -hmm. but i think you know trish does raise a good point um i hope we're gonna get some clarity on this issue before we end up in court um you know i'm actively discussing these these bills with the speaker staff i'm, I'm you know special use permits is on our list um but I have, I mean, I have concerns about both approaches. It's just a matter of what do we feel, based on Todd's interpretation, puts Tiverton in the best place that it can be. Um, I would agree that I think you should first go through, and if there's anything that you can flip to a yes, flip it to a yes. Um, if there's anything that you're... You mean a per permitted a use. Permitted use. Yes. A P. Yes, a P, excuse me. Um, I mean, I think there are benefits and drawbacks to both performance standards and specific and objective criteria. And I it, maybe it becomes a mix of both of those types of things, depending on what the use is. 
Well, that's, that's my personal view as, as I go through the table. Um, it, the more controversial special use permits should probably remain special use permits because then the neighbors are notified, there's a process, there's an open process, the public can get involved. Um, the less controversial could probably, we could probably go with, uh, with uh, performance standards on those. Um, but whatever we do, we have, to, we have to do it pretty quickly because we are on a, t uh, on a schedule. Um, I, I, we roughly have until the middle of this year, which is only five, five months or so away now, um, uh, to, to decide what to do and then to have Ashley's firm actually do a lot of the work on it. I believe you, you have the contract. Mm -hmm. um, Weston and Sampson has the contract for doing either um, specific and objective criteria if we m retain the special use permit or going to performance standards. So we have to make some decisions. A another little um, piece to this puzzle is the fact that um, we're more or less doing the same thing that the Zoning Revision Committee, um, whose, um, whose chair is here with us tonight, Jay Edwards, um, is doing. They will be looking at the use table, I'm sure, and making some recommendations. Uh, in fact, they've already taken a look at, at some of the special use permits, some or all of the special use permits for the three form-based code zones, uh, which is up in North Tiverton and also at Bliss Four Corners, and, and, the, and that's the traditional Main Street neighborhood business and pedestrian-friendly zones. Um, so, um, so they have a, a role in this as well, and they'll may be making their recommendation to us, and then we'll be making a recommendation to town council. Um, uh, maybe it would help if, maybe it would be useful at this point if, if I just read the six criteria for all special use permits. These are standard. Some special use permits have additional criteria, which is spelled out in the zoning code. But, but the six are, and, and these stay the same. The state legislature did not change these. Well, those are not listed in state law. Right. There are no standards in the state law for a special use permit. Other than it cannot be based on the comp right. Well, so there is a specific caveat in the law that says that your specific and objective criteria can't be that it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. And the logic, for lack of a better term, there is that if you gave it a special use permit designation, it's technically a conditionally permitted use. And therefore, you have determined it to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Otherwise, you would have designated it as not allowed well, or a prohibited use. Well, consistency with the comp plan happens to be one of the six right. that is so still listed on, in our zoning bef code. Before you read those, I, I, I'm not sure you can keep them because they're right. not specific or objective. Right. They are general and subjective and I, th I think there's a this is where this issue of and because they're not listed in state law they're all individually developed by a municipality so your standards although probably similar to other Very communities similar. are not a standardized yeah. required like finding that you have to come to it's not the same thing as with a variance where it specifically says in the state law right. these are the things you have to find in right. order to issue a variance that doesn't exist in the special use permit law right. section communities have developed these standards you know based on certain things there are they're probably very similar from municipality to municipality, but they're not, they're not founded in state law, basically. My concern is I want you to be able to keep them, but because of the way they've changed the language, I think there's a discussion that needs to happen there. Is it specific? Is it objective? Is it even enabled in state law that we can have these types of findings? 
or types of requirements. And I think that's part of where I've, I've, you know, I've heard some differentiating opinions, legal opinions on that specific issue. Can I keep those? Yeah, you can keep them. No, you can't keep them. They're not specific. They're not objective. They're, it's, they're, uh, you know, there's what I think meets that is different from what you think would meet that. And so I think that's part of the right. problem with special use permits now right. is we've lost flexibility. We've lost tailor, tailoring a special use permit to a specific use on a specific property. And we've, they've generalized special use permits, which I think in, in a lot of ways has rendered them pretty useless. Well, up and up until um, up until the time we suspended our special use permits, um, the zoning board, uh, w when they had a special use permit before the zoning board, would use the crit the general criteria. And I'm just going to review them. It'll only take a second, just so everybody around the table understands how the zoning board was making its decision. Um, so you'll find these in, in Article 16 of the Zoning Code in Section uh, 2A. Uh, there are only six criteria. They're very brief. The first is the public convenience and welfare will be served. It will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, morals, or welfare. Number three, it will be compatible with neighboring uses and will not adversely affect the general character of the area. Four, it will not create a nuisance in the neighborhood, nor hinder or endanger vehicular or pedestrian movement. Number five, it will have adequate provision made for water service, sanitary sewage disposal, and fire protection. And number six, it will be compatible with a comprehensive community plan of the town of Tiverton. So that's what we've had up until now. Um, and, and those are very subjective uh, criteria that you could argue and get argued before the, before the zone, zoning board. Um, the, other thing, the other thing that occurred to me as I went through the use table carefully and took a look at the zoning map is that our, uh, our commercial zones um, are, uh, are very thin. Um, they extend on both sides of Main Road. They extend um, on both sides of Stafford Road in the Bliss Four Corners neighborhood, but not north of that. Um, and then we have, and those are all form-based code zones, the three, <clears throat> the three form-based code zones. We also have three tiny general commercial zones that are all surrounded by uh, or abut residential neighborhoods. So we don't have a Medicom Avenue in Tiverton. We don't have a place that is clearly commercial. Um, all of our commercial zones um, are, are very, are, are within touching distance of residential neighborhoods. And if you take a look at general commercial, um, you'll see that um, there are only three tiny spots. Um, uh, the, the one closest to us now is the corner of Sousa Road and Main Road, and that's a one acre lot where a gasoline station and convenience store have been proposed. We also have a general commercial zone uh, of about the same size um, down on the waterfront just north of the Boathouse restaurant. And the third general commercial district, again, it's a tiny lot. It, it, it appears to be the lot that hosts the bank at Bliss, at Bliss Four Corners. So. Um, so if you keep that in mind and you go through and look at all of the special uses that um, could, if the zoning board were to give its uh, approval, um, could be put in those zones, um, I, I think you'd be a little astounded. Um, so I, I would urge you, I brought my copy along and I'll just, you can pass it along. This is the official version according to 
uh, Joan Shabbat um, of, of our zoning. And um, so keep that in mind. Um, so how would you like to proceed? I have a, I have a, I have a, just, just two, two, two things, Dick, and then I'll call on you. I, I have a fairly short list of special uses in our existing code um, that I think could be changed from S to P, permitted by right. It's a very short list. I have a much longer list of special use permits that um, should be cha should be not permitted, that should should move from S to N, meaning not permitted, uh, in certain zones, um, and particularly in the general commercial zones. Um, and um, I'd be happy to go through that list or not. It, it, you, you get to decide how you want to organize this agenda item. Dick. Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing to uh, what Ms. Hilton was saying on the traffic thing. Uh, I found that the uh, samples that uh, Ashley uh, provided us were great. But it kept sending me down a rabbit hole. I was looking at gas stations. And, you know, you have odor. Where you say, odor is one of those things. I couldn't define it, but I know it when I, when I run across it. <laughs> but you say, well, how do you determine that? I mean, that's a pretty uh, uh, technical process of, of gathering a cubic foot of contaminated, odorous, uh, atmosphere and diluting it with three cubic feet as well as, as monitoring it and you run into things like reflected light mm -hmm. that I had to spend I'd have to then go research well how do you determine I mean shining a light shining in somebody's bedroom in a next-door residence is pretty straightforward uh, that they have to be downcasted Reflecting light to me was a little more difficult thing, uh, and part of a lot of that is just because I'm new to that. But um, so what I found was happening was it was taking me forever to get through the use table. Each one would just send me off in another direction to find out uh, how you could put that into action and so what that would take, or whether it takes. You know, I agree. I, for years. I've, I've read a lot of traffic reports that were presented to the board just before you had to, had to vote. And said, oh, yeah, that's on page 238, Appendix A. Uh, clearly, this is not going to uh, yeah, increase we got it tonight traffic. Before. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Dick, Dick is, is unique in this room in that he served for many years on the Zoning Board of Review and did make decisions based on these criteria. And one of the criteria that is often um, referenced is it will not be a nuisance in the neighborhood. Well, that's very subjective, and, and that typically means traffic, noise, excessive light, um, odor, and litter, right, when it comes to commercial establishments. But then you're going to, you know, you're going to have the neighbors saying one thing and then the experts will be brought in and they'll say something very different. So it's not easy. This is not easy to sort out. Yes. I have a question for Todd and Ashley. Um, what happens if, besides performance standards and objective criteria, we took the use table and we were more specific about carving out a use? In other words, you know, to say, uh, for example, if we were going to permit gas stations, right? And we, we've talked the, a little bit about this at, at the other committee. Um, you know, if you if you made the use for automobile filling stations limited to, um, you know, X number of pumps and and uh, retail space not to exceed, you know, a hundred square. In other words, if you made that part of the of the actual use table, right? Then is that more defensible? Is that less appealable via a variance or a or a you know because that doesn't really have a 
it's, there's not a performance standard to that, right? I mean, it's either well, that is the standard. It is the standard, standard right? right? It is, but it, it's not a it, it's not a uh, it's not a performance standard in terms of uh, um, you know noise or odor. Like in other words, it's something very specific. So maybe some of these uses need to be carved into more specific, finite, granular uses as opposed to the big, you know, broad umbrella category that we have now. Just going with the gas station example, right? So what are you going to have? A use of gas station with four pumps, a use of a gas station with eight pumps, with 12 pumps? No, I, I mean, I think you, I, I think you, you know, you might, I, and I'm just sort of using. No, and that's why I was right. But, uh, but, you know, if you said, you know, a, a gas station, you know, you could pick a number. You could say, you know what, we don't want get, get, we don't want gas stations that have more than, you know, six pumps, whatever, everybody agrees in. A anything above that is just too big for Tiverton. Mm -hmm. So you say it's six, you know, with a limit of, you know, 100 <laughs> square feet of retail because little gas stations have, you know, they have the little places where they sell stuff, right? I, I don't, I, I'm trying to find a way for some of these uses because, you know, we're not ubiquitous here. One of the problems with Tiverton is that, you know, to Stu's point, first of all, we don't have any commercial areas that are sort of like big blocks on the map. A almost all of them abut residential zones. So that's an issue because you have to, you know, you, have, you don't want to ruin somebody's neighborhood when you're abutting a residential zone with something. You know, and then on top of that, we don't have public water and public sewer everywhere. So that's another whole, you know, kettle of fish. And we have two drinking water reservoirs, which very few other communities have, one of which is the least protected reservoir in the state, and that's the one that, that we get drinking water from. So, oh, and by the way, if you ever looked at the soil map in Tiverton, you know, we have some of the worst soils for septic system in the entire state. So, you know, it's one thing to say we're going to something's going to fit just fine here because there's public water and there's public sewer and it's not going to be an environmental issue and oh my lord you can't put it over there because you know the soil's not going to be able to handle it the stormwater runoff is going into stafford pond like we have a lot of different issues to deal with that a, that a town that is fully watered and fully sewered and doesn't have reservoirs to worry about you know so that's why I think we have so many special use permits in our zoning code. So I'm just wondering if maybe making the table bigger and saying this is, you know, kind of this is it, this is a use is, I, a, is I think, a way to. Well, as you're explaining, we've we talked a little bit about this, as you said, with the zoning, with the committee that's working on zoning. and. I, in my mind, doing something like that and saying, yes, we will have gasoline filling stations, but they will be limited to this, this, and this, and we just won't have anything over that, to me, lends itself to the special use permit idea. Because if, at Todd's advice, you can't waive those standards, then you are either checking those boxes or you are not. You are either you know, 300 square feet of convenience area, six pumps, X amount of landscaping. And if you can't meet those, then you can't have your use. And if that is the box that Tiverton wants to fit uh, that use into, then I think special use permit can, can work for that. My concern with the special use permit is on the other side of it where it's, you know, I'm thinking more about things like landscaping buffers and access points and things like that where somebody may come in and it may be designed well and you all look at that plan and say well it doesn't meet specific and objective criteria one three and eight but it meets the other ones and we're okay that it doesn't meet one three and eight because it's been designed properly our concerns have been mitigated and we would approve this as is well you can't because they don't meet one, three, and eight, and they can't get a variance from it, and that means they can't operate and you can't let them. So I'm more concerned about that situation. 
to what you're speaking to, I think a special use permit would work well. It's rigid. It, you fit in the box or you don't. And if you don't fit in the box, you don't pass go. You don't get a building permit. You don't get what you wanted. I think that will work for some things. But on the, on the side of it where you want to be a little more flexible, you want to negotiate these issues, you can't under a special use permit anymore. That's a problem. And I would add, Trish, that if you have gas station in the use table, gas station with six pumps, because that's what Tiverton has decided it will allow, the only way to vary that is a use, is use, use variance. variance. Right. Whereas you have gas station in the use table, and then a performance standard of no greater than six pumps. If that certain situation comes along where seven pumps is appropriate for whatever reason, you could vary that. But, or but special use permit. If it's criteria. a specific and objective criteria, then, then you, it. that's it. You either hit that mark or you don't. Mm -hmm. That's why I think you're gonna we're gonna have to come up with a combination of both because and that's really I think maybe the first exercise here. In, in doing this is sorting this use table into those three types of categories. One, it's it was previously a special use permit. We're going to flip it to a, a, a P. It's now a permitted use because for whatever reason, we, we feel comfortable doing that. The next category would be we want flexibility here. We want to be able to negotiate with a developer. We want to be able to reduce their landscape buffer or ask them for more than what they're providing or what, you know, we need to be able to have some wiggle room. Those I would say become performance standards issues because that's where you can do that. And then these are the uses that although we would like to allow them, we want to allow them under very specific conditions and very specific circumstances. And if they can't meet these standards, we don't care that they can't meet, that they can't come in. They either check the box or they don't. If they can't check the box, they can't, they can't come to that location. They have to figure something else out. And then I think you have essentially sorted your use table into permitted uses performance standard type uses and special use permits. And, because, how, and how about non-permitted uses? You have to add those to your list of prohibited uses because if you don't put them on the prohibited uses list, somebody can still come and right. say, right. I want to do this use. It's not in your table. Right. I would like you as the zoning, uh, you know, zoning board to consider whether or not I fit under it's some similar. other special use yeah. permit category. Similar to something that right. we do have, yeah. I, I, I understand that, but um, so so what do you need, Ashley, what, since your your firm is doing the work, what do you need from the planning board? Do you need, do you need our advice on? If you sort the use sort table. The, how to sort the use table. Yep, if you tell us as the board, the, this is the policy direction for the that the board is providing. This, These are, turn these permitted, get us some performance standards for these, and write us specific and objective criteria. We'll go do the legwork, we'll bring you back drafts, you'll go through those drafts, we'll amend those performance standards and those specific and objective criteria at the board's direction. I would suggest too, as, as well, when you're making these categories, if there's something specific you want for a performance standard. Tell or, me now. Yeah. Something and that Tiverton knows that it needs. And it would be helpful to hear as part of that exercise, This we think this can be a performance standard as long as we're dealing with this, this, and this. These are our concerning issues for this type of use. Same thing with special use permits. We're okay with these if they look like this and they have and they meet these require these types of requirements and then we can go do the background research, we can find other examples, we can put together a draft for you to respond to. Yes, Tricia. I I I still though go back to my concern that if if a lot of this turns into things that are going to be adjudicated by uh, the applicant's expert witnesses and where the town is in the position of having to provide an expert witness to rebut that it's just not going to be workable. I mean, there's never going to be enough funding for the planning board to just be able to hire, you know, ad nauseum experts when 
if it's all based on expert testimony. That is definitely. Well, but that's how it's been for decades now. And there are, there are voters that can hire their experts as well. And you are allowed to hire a, an independent review. <laughs> yes, but we, I'm, realistically, the planning board does not and probably never will have the kind of funds to be able to go out and hire a traffic expert from out of state, you know, who's not. It's at the applicant's expense. Exactly. The consulting engineer is supposed to be doing our, and if you look at Todd's list, the bulk of these were all written by attorneys for the applicant so that it wouldn't be a spot zone. I mean, and we have, that's how we do I just, it. I just have a concern that this turn, that we don't make that we don't get into a situation where, you know, this becomes a matter of, of, of the applicant has, an applicant with deep pockets has expert testimony, and the town of Tiverton and the planning board does not have the kind of deep pockets to hire, you know, equivalent experts, nor frankly, in the case of Butters, are they going to be in a position of having to hire experts. You know, one of the things about taking away those subjective criteria, right, is that it allowed for a little bit of common sense. It allowed for a little bit of, wait a second, you know, we live here. We have a pretty good handle on what the situation is. And yes, these neighbors, it, th that was part of the process. That's now been taken away. Mm -hmm. and, and if it becomes a battle of experts, you know, the deep-pocketed developers are going to win. On the other hand, for some of the smaller things, you know, some of these smaller developers may not be able to afford to do it if it's a matter of, well, you know, you've got to provide us with this and you've got to provide us with that and you've got to provide this study. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, but I hope that that's not where we're going to end up. But I think this is a problem that's existed yeah. the entire time we've had a zoning I don't think you can code. regulate it away either no I don't think you can regulate it away I think that I, yes I would agree the problems existed but I think it's going to exist on steroids now and, and I think you still have your sense of common your your ability to apply common sense you can still question a witness an expert witness and as long as you identify where their flaws are in their presentation then I can defend that you don't have to accept every expert that comes in as long as you identify why and I know it's easier if there's a competing expert, but you're a smart lady, I know that. I'm not that smart. <laughs> no, we're not up to that task. We really aren't. I mean, you're... But all I'm saying, Stu, is it's no different than it has been for decades. Right. Uh, and, um, I just don't want to see even, it be worse. And even when we hire um, peer reviewers who were theoretically working for the town of Tiverton, um, Engineers don't like to call out other engineers. Let me just say that. My experience is that um, that that the peer reviews that we have had, some of them have been um, just a waste of everybody's time. But the engineer got paid. Um, but it's a larger so problem than trying to identify our it's, standards. It, now. It, 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 it's I mean, an issue. You know the the the. the, the Hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil thing has been going on for a long time, and everybody in the planning community knows it. Um, but that's what we're up against. Um, is there... Uh, well, I know that I, would a solution be for us to have a special meeting for everybody to review? We'll all go through the table and then have a special meeting and just try and... I, 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 I was a workshop. I was going to suggest that because I don't think people are really prepared. I mean, you've gotten a little bit of a taste of it. And it sounds like we need a path of how we're going to handle this, the order of operations. Right, right. now, there's still people need to be spoken to, more information needs to be gathered, more clarity. We're not there yet. An analysis needs to be made of the uses that we have in the table and a discussion on them, and maybe some of the institutional knowledge that goes around goes sure. with it. I mean, instead of saying, we'll change it all to permit it or we'll change it all to no, I mean, we, we need to have a good sit down. We're not getting our arms around it tonight, so we have to move on for sure. No, I mean, I think the intent of this evening's meeting was to provide you with some background information, give you some examples, have this conversation, 
make a determination on what the path forward is. I mean, we, we have people ready to, to draft. You know, we just need direction from the planning board in terms of what are we drafting for what. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it will probably take a workshop session to sit down with the use table and go through line by line and sort them into these different buckets and figure out, you know, where they belong in terms of what we've just discussed and then you know with some understanding about what the concerns and issues are related to 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 them then we can take that back we can make a draft for you to respond to but without that initial step we you know we're kind of drafting in the dark we can guess um but we'd rather have the the feedback first so that we can draft in the right direction right could and and um, and I, I would think that that feedback would involve feedback from the board on whether or not we can cut this list, which is over 100 special use permits, if we can cut it back mm -hmm. by either making some uses uh, permitted by right or taking other uses right off the table and putting them on the not permitted or prohibited, prohibited list. list. Um, um, so we would start there. And then we would take a look at the bulk that remains and we would try to sort out which ones we think are special use with specific and objective criteria attached and which can, can be performance standards. Um, um, and, and I'm thinking that maybe, maybe we could have a special workshop on that, but we would need to get, it would be a, an official meeting of the planning board and we would, would need to get a quorum of five people. So please and would a Saturday morning be good or would you prefer something else um, I'm thinking maybe a Saturday morning because we we have so many meetings at night I've been sitting in on on the zoning revision committee I'm a member of the North Tavernon committee um, so I've been uh, going to a lot of night meetings but I'll do a night meeting if if you prefer that so maybe we can have Ed poll the group and see what seems to be the better get a general consensus now get a, well let's see yeah. Yeah. yeah saturdays work well for me i would prefer a saturday evenings would be okay. difficult great I, janice <coughs> saturday sounds good to Perfect. you dick sure i'm i'm good with saturday saturday morning i'm fine like nine to twelve mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Show up yeah right. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot to cover in three hours. I think it it's is, a lot to cover, it is to incredibly important to be prepared and have a plan of attack for facilitation and um, to be able to go through that. Um, so I would I would just offer and recommend that if we're going to if we're going to do this, that if people could take the time initially oh, yeah sit with the use table and in your mind kind of maybe even like whether it's color it coding mm -hmm. or like marking somehow go through and do an initial pass right. through the use table to say i think we can permit this i think this needs performance standards and i think this needs to be a special use permit at least everyone comes to the table with some ideas and then we can kind of talk through going through the use table we can talk through those and we can kind of if there's a debate we can have that conversation categorize it and keep moving right and do you put it on the agenda for the following tuesday after that saturday meeting also so if we had to roll into a secondary discussion it's right there right behind it and it's fresh in our heads right we we, we could do that um and keep in mind that um, special use permits are applied to specific zones. So you also have to say, well, does this right. use belong in this particular zone? So where you, wherever you see an S, that, that means that zone is, uh, is open for that special use permit application. So on that point, and we can save this for the workshop, but can you have varying either performance standards or specific and objective criteria depending I think on, can. on the, the zone. zone. On the zone. Yes, I think you can. Right, so it's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all, but you can further tailor. You could say that 
a drive through in this zone requires this, this, and this. Exactly. A drive through in this zone has a different set. I think you can do that. Yeah. Mm. I have a question about the statement of work here. So, am, am I allowed to ask a question sure. on that? So, we know we have this six month window that we're playing with. We've talked about it several times. If I look at, so that six month window ends, you know, end of June, I guess, technically. If I look at the, the sort of the project schedule, we are out until, based on this, October for getting the final zoning ordinance language, right? Because we have town council public hearings, right? You got to back into all of that. So my, I guess my question is, if we have a six month window, this timetable extends to October. That's a math problem, um, right? On the surface. Yeah, I just want to look at what your... You're, you're right, Bill. Right now, the moratorium is till the end of June. So yeah. with advertising I mean, to the town council, really, this board has to have its decisions mid-April. Then to allow enough time for all of these subsequent yeah, no. actions yeah. to take place to be able to say it's blessed, it's codified, and it's now the sort of the law of the land. That jumped out at me. That's not to say that the... Could you extend the more? Extend the moratorium. You could. I think you'd have to have really good reason to do that yeah. and show progress. Work. Progress, progress yeah. right? Yeah. Well, Honestly, if you if you just keep extending it, I just feel like you're kicking the can down the road, <coughs> right? Like, uh, agreed. Let's but if you've the, done three quarters of it, and you're you've, you've worked on the last quarter. Sure, sure. But it, it. But technically, this is not a moratorium. Technically, what the council did is they just turned all the S's. They they rezoned yes. it. They changed all yes. the S's. You, no. So it, it so has a sunset. It though. has a, it has a sunset. But the council could extend, extend that if we showed that you know we were doing due diligence right. and it was in the process of public hearings. So, so if it's you, different from the, if, the moratorium. If you go back to that schedule, yeah. one, two, three, and four relate to special use permits. Those that ends in June. Okay. Five and on are related to different tasks that are specifically called out in your comprehensive plan as mechanisms to increase affordable housing production. Okay. So there's two pieces to this work. Perfect. So the, the special use permit timeline stops in June. You'll see those four tasks. I see it. They don't go beyond June. Great. Um, my only other comment on this is under task five, it looks like bullets one and four are dupes. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what page that is, but uh, page two. It just looks like a copy and paste. Duplications? Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Yes, Dick. Yeah, I don't know if it would be worthwhile, but since we're going to do the workshop, that on the surface, without knowing what was behind it, it seems like we could go through that table and some things, I mean, if you take uh, quality of life into it or for whatever, I was looking at uh, apartments and uh, uh, multifamily. Well, it's uh, special use in R30 it's not permitted in R40. It is special use in R60. And you say, what's the rationale behind what's that? What's the rationale behind <laughs> that? I mean, there ought to be. There, there's and a lot some of, of those, it looked to me like you could just flip those yep. and just say, if it's not going to be permitted in R40, it's certainly, mm -hmm. we don't think it's best for the town because survey after survey has shown that people are interested in the rural character of the town. And, and so part of it is a density issue, but like I say, I don't know why R60 is special use and in R40 it's uh, not permitted. And, but some of these it looks like just almost by, with some simple criteria, we could just flip. Right. and just say, no, like on right. either side of them. So, so we would start this workshop probably asking, um, can we cut the list back? 
mm -hmm. either either by permitting or putting it on the prohib prohibited list. Then we're what we're left with. Then we can go through and and decide. And I think we would get consensus. Um, is it is it a special use with specific and objective criteria, or should it or should we uh, treat this as a uh, uh, performance standard? So, um, so good. And I just like to follow up on something that Dick said. Um, when when we when we do zoning, it, it's not. It's not our own personal preference necessarily, and it's certainly, and we're not just tweaking what is in the zoning code now. Everything should be based on the comprehensive community plan. The comprehensive plan is the basis, the foundation for zoning, theoretically. And but over the years, um, our our zoning has gotten out of sync with a comprehensive community plan, which calls for small town character, high visual quality, scenic quality, well-designed buildings, um, and the protection of important natural resources, whether it's forest and farmland or, uh, or water bodies, as uh, Tricia was saying earlier. So keep all of those things in mind and just flip through the comp plan, um, maybe as a, as a bit of preparation to, to, to it, because that's really what we should be doing and not just looking at, at the junk that's in the zoning, frankly, the zoning code now, and attempting to tweak it. I think, it, I think taking a more radical approach might be the best way to go. And um, one thing I'd, I'd ask for from Todd for clarity purposes, not now, um, but before we have that workshop, is not, we, 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 he's basically said that his interpretation is that if you have specific and objective criteria, they're not to be varied. You can't get a variance from the specific and objective criteria. My second question has to do with those existing standards under special use. Um, and the the premise that it was not intended to be a box checking exercise because they left it to the zoning board to issue special use permits, <coughs> so there's some discretionary ability left there. And again, don't you don't no, have to I answer. Can't already. Okay. I think those existing criteria form the basis for your specific and objective criteria. But as I also say in my memorandum, I think there is some wiggle room for either board some subjectivity because what you're going to specify is what evidence has to be presented and whether you accept that evidence how you interpret that is different right yeah i mean for me as i sort of read through everything yes anyone can supply evidence whether you agree that the evidence is the that does it mean is it satisfactory y yeah and there you get some wiggle room Right, like so. In any case, I, I, mean, I think we'll I think you'll get wiggle room on that side of it. In in the case where, like, obviously, you cannot spell out every traffic requirement for a special use permit. You have to rely on them submitting evidence from a traffic expert that you know meets some st meets the national standard or whatever whatever it is. Where I still struggle with this is these like things like landscaping that are kind of soft like there's no standard for landscaping you either are going to ask them for a 25 foot buffer or you're going to ask them for a 15 foot buffer like how are we going to write a specific and objective criteria related to that I, I think that's why you need performance you need a mixture of the both mm. I'm just in my mind wondering if there's some ability here to well you know what apply, to apply both to the same use like can we're, I we're say we're just going to have to do it and see how it works out and if it's not working out we'll, we'll revisit it you know yeah. it's just one of those we can't anticipate all of the issues that are going to come no, up I understand over, over, over the next couple of years We'll just take our best shot at it, and if there are issues and problems, 
um, and people are getting away with murder or people aren't getting enough flexibility, whatever the problem, we can always revisit that. We'll, you know, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Um, I, I, I'm just wondering, are there, is there any outside people that we need to bring into our work, our Saturday morning workshop? John Hoyle, for example, or anybody, Ashley, anybody from your organization that might want to, you know, contribute and um, think about that. Okay. Because we could we could do that, and we've got the budget. If we need to pay an honorarium, we've got a little, we've got money in the well, budget you, for you, that. Well, you this is paid for okay, through the is, MTAP is, funding. So this is paid for. for okay. I, at least Weston and Samson's work is paid for. So if I bring okay. somebody with me, you, you don't have to. That's part of what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. My, my only concern still is what the zoning revision committee is doing and not duplicating or. Well, on their toes. well, I think that I, I think that they have already gone through the use tables for the form-based code zones and they have made recommendations and I think we can maybe um, circulate those recommendations to members of the planning board in advance of our workshop mm -hmm. so they'll they'll see that Jay is that is that okay with you Jay is the uh, <laughs> uh, can we get a copy of what the zoning revision board recommended with respect to special use permits in the form-based code zones yeah. and we can get that in in advance of our of our workshop some on some saturday morning coming up because because you did this quite a long time ago and i think for the for the rest of the code and one of the first things that we're going to do in advance of this saturday morning workshop is we're going to make one use table out of this because that's the only way to go through this it yeah, was supposed to mimic when was the form base was supposed to mimic the well it originally. it does mostly okay. but what i want to see is i want to see that use table with the form based districts oh, yeah. on the oh, end yeah. of it absolutely absolutely so that we can look at it's everything as it's one very confusing it, now because yes. you've got two two different documents so that's the first thing that we're going to do in and, preparation and, for that the workshop zoning, the zoning revision committee completely agrees with that and, and just so you know there are one or two uses that don't match up the most right i know we talked about the fact that they don't they don't they don't match exactly um <clears throat> okay could um I guess could we go as far as like trying to nail down the schedule for this saturday yes that's what i was going to oh, do okay. i can't um i i'm not in town this coming saturday but any other saturday i'm available um so janice did i just you have, have a question in looking at this like dick had brought up what is the difference between a single family dwelling and a household? I believe the household is defined in the zoning statutes. And honestly, it Janice, is. I don't understand why they have it. Okay. I, I have no idea. Why it's in the use table, you yeah. mean? Well, I, I don't understand how you could even, re how can you regulate a household? I have no it's idea. Not, that's not a use in the use table well that should come out it's in the use table yes yes e. page, page one residential section e. two e yeah i mean a household is not a use but we do define it um so that's so. a short answer janice makes no sense <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get rid of it so Saturday the tenth is not good for me, but if it's good for everybody else, I don't. It's not. I, I don't think it's enough time for people to go through this exactly. exercise. Exactly. Exactly. So how about Saturday the seventeenth? Would Saturday the seventeenth be okay, or is that too too it's soon? Long, I don't mind, but it is a long weekend. It's oh, it's the long weekend. Monday is right. Monday is President's Day. So we, it would be the Saturday of the long weekend. It doesn't compute, Bill. It's not a market holiday. I don't, I don't recognize those. But. 
or at least my employer doesn't. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can do that. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. Good. Nine o'clock no, Saturday, Saturday morning, the seventeenth. Here, yeah. and you'll, you'll clear that we that we can use yeah, this well, building. It will have to be advertised. I yeah, think it's it, it the needs same to be. item that we have right now on the agenda. Okay. Good. Okay. Excellent. Okay, we've all got some homework to do. <laughs> so I just want, in advance of that meeting, we're going to get everyone the combined use table so that you can all sp spend time going through it. Well, they've, they've got... They've got this nine-page document, which we put together a long time ago. Right. Um, and it has um, it has the uh, the special uses for the form-based code, as well as um, <coughs> Appendix A. Okay. So are we do, are we agreeing then that we're going to work from this version? It, 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 well, it was color coded, and, yep. and we should ignore the color coding because that's no longer relevant. Um, we did that a long time. I did that a long time ago when we thought we would have a different approach to the moratorium before we decided to just turn all of the S's to um, to ands. Um, so, uh, so ignore the color coding, but you can use that just to save paper and time if it I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page in yeah. terms of like what we're going to get out to everybody in advance so that they can have enough time to do what they yeah. need to do with the documents yeah. Town hall closes at 1 1 30 on Friday Stu, yes is, is that the version that has the edited recommendations on the zoning update committee no. no no so maybe it would be better if we get that to Ashley and let her put Combine. those into that instead because and, and they can be marked up so that people know what the original We can make it was, clear what the changes what were. The what the changes That's an then, excellent and, idea. Then you're only working yeah. off of one. It would be sheet. best to and work then, from one then, document. And then you can make sure that we have everything. We have, we have the, uh, the standard code and we have the form-based. Okay. And, and anything from like the solar. So we have a hundred percent and the recommendations from the uh, from the zoning revision committee okay good we've got a plan so I, I guess we can now move on to the next agenda item <clears throat> which is a uh, five-year comprehensive plan update to statewide planning. Um, and, uh, and it has some typos. Janice, do you want to <laughs> lead us through? Yeah, this is entitled Draft um, Five-Year Implementation Report for the 2018 Comprehensive Plan. I found on Action 13, uh, underutilized, utilized is spelled incorrectly. And what page is that? Page one? Um, it's under Economic Development Action 13. Oh, uh, econ Last page. economic development, um, okay, and okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes, correct, thank you. I, I missed that. Did you, find, did you find anything else? Um, there was something else, I don't think I marked it. Yeah, there, there, there's, um, in the open space, the last paragraph in open space, which is the last page, there's a V that got stuck in there, and um, and I've, there are a couple of other um, typos that I caught. 
Um, did you find anything? Oh, I okay, I good. I have some suggestions. I mean, I would suggest capitalizing north on the Tiverton. North okay. Tiverton okay. You can okay, that's fine. A search for that. And on the first page, I would also suggest putting in effective 1124 for the state where you talk about the uh, complying with the new state housing legislation effective, you know, just for clarity for somebody's for them to read. Okay. Um, then on page, uh, let's see. page two, mm -hmm. action for Grinnell Speech and Stonebridge Abutment. Uh -huh. And the last, the last word on there, instead of community, from the state and town and the town. That's fine. Instead of community. That's fine. The uh, just below that, under mm -hmm. action nine, uh -huh. through on it's Stonebridge Water District. We have a North Tiverton Fire District and a Stonebridge Water District, not Fire District. Is that is that true? Yes, no. it is. And then what on. Was the question? Hmm? Is the, I couldn't hear you, Rosemary. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I, I need. Okay. Uh, Stonebridge Water District instead of Stone, Stonebridge Fire District. But when they came before the planning <coughs> board with their um, schoolhouse subdivision some years ago, they that always went on our agenda is Stonebridge Fire District. Oh, it's wrong because okay. Frank Proposal was the okay. Uh, okay. ahead of it. You can look at okay. the bills. Okay. Okay. Uh, there. Okay, I'll change, I'll, change it. I'll change too. it. I'll change it. I'll change it. And I would suggest on that same page down, down under action number 10, uh -huh. TMDL, define it, and then put that in, in parentheses. Yeah. It okay. is a fire so district. it is fire. I just looked it up online. It is a fire it district. It says Stonebridge fire, fire, fire District Water Department. District. They have a water department, but it is a fire district. Right. Oh, it must have changed. On their bills, too? Okay, what else? Okay, I stand Com corrected. Communication. Okay, uh, the next page, uh -huh. page three, I guess. There's spelling. Okay, yeah. which page are you on? Page three. Okay, page three. Uh, correct the communication between the town administration. It just needs to be. Which item? In impediments and implementation it's there's a space in there. yes right right communications it's just a little typo uh-huh um, okay and it's Robert Gray Avenue instead of Robert Gray Drive on action 11 the next page action 11 see it up above it's like five rows down Robert Gray Robert Gray Avenue. Avenue. Thank you. And uh, same page. Uh -huh. I would suggest Action Three C. Uh, town. The Town Council has applied to Rhode Island Commerce for enrollment. Yes, I, I caught that. Okay. I caught that. All right. Um, next page. It's the trust is spelled incorrectly. Uh huh. And again, capitalize North Tiverton. Uh huh. And down below, fix the uh, alignment on Action 18. Just action, picking action, things. Action, action, action 18. My uh, old life is coming back. Streetscape improvement attractive. Mm -hmm. The alignment. Just to push action that over. is. Action. They had one space. Push it over. <clears throat> push that over. Oh, okay. So okay, I didn't even I didn't even notice it. I hope somebody is keeping Okay, excellent, thank you. Okay. Um, so this is uh, so I can uh, I'll clean this up on my computer tomorrow morning and send it to Ed, and Ed can get it off to statewide planning. But I think I need a motion to. Need a couple to go with it. I'll I can send it if you yeah. yeah. Stu, if you send it to Ed, Ed and I will work together. We'll That's put right. a cover letter you can on put it. A cover letter on it, and we'll send it to the state. Excellent, it thank you. To the board. Yeah, we'll put it in the next packet. And, okay. and uh, so I need a motion to approve with corrections. I'll make a motion to approve 
uh, second. the report as amended. So we have a motion and Dick seconded uh, Tricia's motion. Do we have further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, that brings us to agenda um, item C, uh, uh, D, which is solar ordinance use table changes and application checklist. Um, Ashley, did you have anything on this? We do have a we do have a backup, which is the possible PB checklist additions for solar applications. Um, did you all have a chance to go through this? <coughs> I think the issue is that is that some of those were originally or in the ordinance are being permitted under both. Article 20 and his major land developments, which you can't do anymore. And and there are a couple, by the way, the solar isn't the only one. There's a couple of other things in, in the zoning code that are specifically identified as being identified, uh, being approved with both yeah. those things, which you can't do anymore. Yep. So you have to figure out an approval path for those. those well, I think they'll be major land developments, those other things. They were multifamily. The administrative officer still has the right to determine the review process. So I think in those places where you have that language, the, they're going to have to pick one well, or the it other. Be better for the, wouldn't it be better for the board to decide how they want, how they want these things reviewed? Uh, not saying that you can't pick. I'm just saying in the, in the meantime, the, the administrative officer will have to sort that out. Right. Well, the, the language in the development plan review has already been stricken. So, right. so those things are just all going to go into major land development then? Or as the administrative officer decides. Well, it's going to be based on the criteria for minor land development. You only get to go into major land development if you exceed the threshold for minor. So if the particular use exceeds the threshold, which <coughs> is typically size. And what is the threshold? The threshold is 7,500 square feet of commercial space. Okay, but, gross. But if you're talking about a solar field, what is that? There isn't one. Okay. It doesn't contemplate that. So, <laughs> well, then. I think you'll have to make the designation because the categories in, in, they don't fit. Right. So they should <coughs> just, I mean, my recommendation then would be for now just take out, you know, the, for the ones that ha that are being reviewed concurrently under um, Article 20 and major land development is that they just go to major land development. It's going to depend on the size, but those are things I'm looking at it now, Trish. It's elderly housing facilities such as a nursing home, retirement residence. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just talking about the solar ordinance. Okay. Yeah. Well, the other ones are going to have to figure out too, but. But they have, but they have a square footage, so they yes. They so those are going to fall whether they fall under or over right. the square footage requirement. <clears throat> the difference is the seventy five hundred square feet doesn't speak to the size of a solar installation. I mean, I guess you could apply the seventy five hundred square feet anyway. If you, I mean, to the size of the arrays. Yeah, to the footprint of the array. I mean, I think that's your best approach given that it doesn't contemplate solar whether that's minor or major right well i'm not sure we have the solution tonight but and and keep in mind there these are also special use permits too which right so that needs to be figured out it needs to be figured out but um, but once it gets figured out then then we do have to figure out what the what the um, approval process is. Trisha, are you done? Oh, sorry. Yes, I am. I, I actually have two things here. So I'm just, just going to point out. So in the middle of page one in what appears to be the third paragraph under checklist, it says that, you know, uh, 
you know, no ground mounted photovoltaic facility shall be constructed until evidence has been given to the planning board that the utility company that operates the electrical grid where the facility is to be located has been informed of the solar photovoltaic facility owner <coughs> or operator's intent to install an interconnected customer owner, uh, customer owned solar distribution generation facility. That seems not necessary if further down at sort of the top third of page two, there is a line that says, again, another item on the checklist, a copy of the preliminary interconnection feasibility study from the apl applicable utility company. If, if we're getting a preliminary interconnection feasibility study from the utility company, uh, I think they would know that, you know, someone's trying to put a, I think it just negates the need for the first checklist item, right? One begets the other. I think maybe what you want there on page one, Trish, is a copy of the interconnection contract before a building permit is issued. Yes. Those are, Slightly those, different. Those are not necessarily in order. And, and, and just so I, you know, we kind of lifted these from what other towns do. But, but part of this and, and this checklist needs to be more refined that, that's sure checklist. sure is that if things are major land development some of those things are things that you need with your initial application versus things that are due at master plan versus things that are due at preliminary plan so even though they might seem like they're redundant okay some of them are like in the beginning you need a, like a basic got it from got it got it got it says, yeah yeah okay we know you're or whatever the utility company is called now we know but then when you get further along that makes sense so that that list is sort of like a gross list brain dump yeah brain dump not in order and not map to where the phase the phase it okay. would be required that makes perfect sense my only other comment here and perhaps this is a implied second to last item here it says applicants must provide a thorough explanation of any transmission lines access or upgrade required as a result of the project including but not limited to the route starting in endpoints potential impacts to street trees and right of way width is is Route starting and endpoints um, inclusive of any potential disruption to roads. Yes, it, it will I'm a little sensitive to that one. Th that's supposed to mean, and maybe it needs given to be my neck of the woods. That's supposed to mean from from when you you know from the box on the property to wherever it is going in the public domain. Yeah. So whatever roadways, trees, anything that in the public domain is going to be interfered with. Sure. That's what that's uh, Okay, that's perfect. My only suggestion here is like we actually call out disruptions to roads, roadway infrastructure, whatever that is. That that issue never ever came up when we when we had uh, Brighton Solar before the planning board, no one anticipated what happened this past summer with 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 Brighton. I mean, that's a stone from where fish I live. Being so being torn up and closed, and it was a mess. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's why that's there. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. Okay, okay, so so we have to come up with a we don't have to do it now, but we have to come up with a different way to approve these things, and then at some point, and and I need some help with this. That brain dump of things that need to be required for solar things needs to get put into some sort of logical order, and where depending on the new approval process, like if they become major land developments, where it what part they are required. I'm hoping you will help with that. You need like a template. What? You need like a template. Right. And, and put all of the put it all diagrams and everything else in. Okay. Anything else on solar? Okay, I think we have a plan. Um, so, yes, uh, um, Jay. Last page. On solar? Yes. There is a third paragraph. 
Uh -huh. Parentheses all over. So it's 200. I think you're missing the 2,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good catch. Okay. I think that brings us to, um, to item E, which is annual report to town council. The, um, the town charter requires us to do an annual report um, to Tiverton Town Council every year. And I forgot a about it in January um, so here it is now and this is a draft and and my new computer doesn't have spell check <laughs> or it does have spell check but I just can't find it to, to activate it and uh, so but I, I did I did have some I did catch some um, some typos and Rosemary do you want to take the lead on this sure. or Janet Janice uh, I will Start with a support staff paragraph. Uh -huh. I would recommend putting in parens a a periods o period for the administrative officer after it's because you use it below. Okay. And then the next line. Okay. Continued as legal counsel. Continued, continued as. Continued is that what it's supposed to be? It's a spelling. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I didn't catch that. Okay. What is it? What's it supposed to be? Continued as. Continued as legal counsel, okay. right? And then uh, again, down two lines after it continued as I would put the board's consulting engineer about Nathan. Get rid of the town engineer because he's and town. continued is spelt incorrectly there as well. Yeah. Uh, the what is spelled? Continued. continued yes, right. Continued is the, right. As the t the board is misspelled. Consulting engineer. Get rid of the town and. Uh, um, but but actually, that has a title. Nathan has a title um, under under it's always under our subdivision regulations or someplace. Consulting engineer is what you go with that, but do what you want. Okay. And then the next paragraph, I would put a plural special meetings on the planning okay. board meetings. Thank you. On the first line. Will do. Um, in that same paragraph. Development legislation effective one one twenty four. Just so the council realizes that. Uh huh. Um, Tim, okay. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, the next. Excuse me. The next. Consulting planning board engineer. Consulting planning board engineer. Thank you. Okay. Where did you find that? Right in our regulation. Okay. The next one. Next page uh -huh. under Andrew Ditton. Uh -huh. um, it was a rural residential, two lot minor rural residential development. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No road required. Thank you. Was conditionally was conditionally approved and accepted. Uh -huh. The next paragraph down major land development. Um, it sounds as though the Sakonet Bay Man of Memory Care, I would suggest putting in a deta detached building. It's not one floor. Okay, that's good. Just for clarity. Yep. Then Colbia, the, the third yep. bullet item. It's on the northeast corner of Main Road, not west. You're right about that. Okay. Um, Do you want to add some currently under litigation? No. Okay. All right. I, I'm just asking. <laughs> you don't want okay. It's not. Well. No. I take it back. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, do you want to put the thing with, about the crematorium down development plan review currently being appealed? No. So. Nah, that's not really our business. You know, well, that's somebody else's. Okay. Uh, next page. Uh -huh. uh, and restaurant is misspelled on that <coughs> page too. Okay. Okay. We've got that one. So, environmental review statement required from pervious cover. Uh, the ERS. I would define that also, either up above it, in the title, where you have it. Concerned that the ERS 
within the Nanquit Pond watershed. Uh huh. Okay. And, uh, okay. Um, okay. Decision is misspelled as well. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then the next paragraph, giving is misspelled. Anything else? When are we getting a clean copy of the land use stuff that the council voted on? Joan is working on that. Okay. Um, and then at the end, Stu, I'd say instead of Deb, I would put her Deborah Janet. Then I have to change J to J Edwards, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, Janice, do you have any? Did you um, catch uh, the chairman's? Yeah, I got that. Okay. okay. You want to put me in the membership list? I'm sorry. I'm not in the membership list. Yet. You're not there? No. I know I'm pretty easy to hide. <laughs> oh, you admitted. Oh, wow. I didn't check that. Please. Um. Oh, yeah, thank, oh, <laughs> yeah, and sorry about that. Field insignificant here. There. <laughs> Just speak up. Okay. Okay, I will put you back in. Thanks. Okay, do, um, do I have a motion to approve this? You have to, you have to um, so approve it as because as it is a planning board it. document. So, uh, I mean, Christopher, I think, made the um, oh. motion and Rosemary seconded the motion. Is there a discussion? This would be to approve with corrections. And I'll do that first thing tomorrow morning and then I'll send it to Ed. Okay? Hearing no further discussion, those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Chris and Rosemary. Uh, approval of minutes from the January 9, 2024 <coughs> meeting. Does anybody have any corrections? I didn't find any. Nathan, Let me see. Nathan I didn't think I. Was. Nathan was at the meeting. He's been left off. Oh, okay. They actually. Um, under I, add under um, agenda item I, it was actually Miss Hilton who gave a brief update to the board on the progress of the zoning code revision committee, not Mr. Hardy. She's, she's our official member. I go to the meetings, but. Okay, go back to page one. Okay. Uh, you've got added Nathan. Yeah. Change uh -huh. Bill Smith to William Smith. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, in that one for for Sandy Woods, I did a lot of talking, but it, nothing came out. So. Did you want to just have a sentence? Miss Eva noted that there were no site plans submitted. In the original plan report, mm -hmm. not. Could you um, say? I can't read it. <coughs> <I'm writing. coughs> yeah. Read it, read it again for Ed's benefit. Ms. Eva noted that there was no site plan had been submitted, and the original plan records should be included. Okay. Yeah, it was the, um, you wanted the um, approved plan. Yeah, the land evidence, yeah. in the land evidence books, yeah. not the assessors. Right. Was that it? Did you, um, the last paragraph on page two. Page two, last paragraph. Ms. Hilton said the committee that wrote the solar ordinance, take out that comma, okay. determined that only agricultural use and property that was deemed to be contaminated, take out that comma, were the only outliers that would allow a ground-mounted 
solar array in a, in a residential zone. That would be allowed. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Anything else, Janice? No, um, did you get on the first page, the second paragraph from the bottom, Mr. Smith and Mr. Hoyle? Yeah, thank you. That's it should be Ms. Sweet suggested that she, Mr. Smith, and Mr. Hoyle. Hoyle. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Janice. Okay, we need a motion to approve with the corrections. So moved. Second. And so we have a motion by Dick Taylor and a second by Chris Shriver. Um, any further discussion? Hearing no discussion. Those in favor? Okay, done. And that brings us to agenda item G, update on Tiverton Infrastructure Capacity Assessment. And I, uh, the, the town administrator has been handling that, and he was here earlier. We probably should have moved this agenda item out of order to hear him because he's been dealing with that, although Ashley, I think, may know something about it. Yep. Ashley, can you give us a little bit of a briefing? Sure. So we actually have a kickoff meeting for this tomorrow, starting tomorrow. Um, we're going to meet with Chris. I know he was intending to uh, forward that invita invitation to the two fire districts, and so we'll initiate the project tomorrow. Um, and. I'll stay involved in it. I'll be able to report back to the board, let you know how things are progressing. But this is a majority of this work is going to be taken care of by others in Weston and Sampson and have this knowledge and expertise and can do all the things that they need to do um, with the data that's there and then also updating the data that, that may not be there um, in order to get the results that we're looking for. But I will stay involved. Um, enough to at least inform you and provide any guidance to the people that are working on this. So it is it is getting initiated tomorrow. Well, can I ask a, a silly question here? Yes. Is well, I mean, I I didn't know what these were in my packet. I mean, this is the title of both of these, or, or what? So you have the two um, scopes of work from the municipal technical assistance program funding those two projects so one municipal of them okay. that's what mtap stands for okay. municipal technical assistance program and that's administered by rhode island housing they are funding both of those projects they are funding the infrastructure capacity analysis and they are funding the other scope that you have, which is to get the special use permits taken care of and then also look at implementing the action items from your comprehensive plan directly related to housing. So that's what those, th your, those are the scopes of work that have been agreed upon by the town and the funding authority. There for this no, work there was no cover letter with them so that was you know what they were they were just thrown in with it we talked about it last time and i had said that we would i would include both of the scopes of work for both of those projects yes, you in did. your next packet <laughs> rosemary are you all done i just two quick things yep so Obviously, this isn't getting changed, but just for my own edification here. So the project purpose at the top of page one, is it is the infrastructure study just about housing development? Or 
or and or commercial. I thought commercial was sort of wrapped up in there. Anything that might tap into, pun not intended, um, water, other infrastructure. So I do think that, it, I mean, it's mainly focused on housing development. development. Um, okay. But I think as part of this, we will be able to kind of tease some of that out and there'll be a better <clears throat> understanding overall what the capacity looks like so that the town can you know can be better educated in allocating that resource okay. because there have been conversations um, specifically at the north tiverton committee there have been conversations about the fact that because part of their focus is not just um like not just the main road with with that commercial development and what that looks like and how that you know tr how we can transform that but also to look at the industrial park okay and so there have been conversations about the fact that there is no specific allocation for water for that industrial park and so the town just needs at this point is just trying to wrap its arms around what we have um and you know that will lead to better decision making and allocation of that resource so i sure. think there'll be subsequent conversations and i think we'll be able to get a better sense of what can what we can do not just with housing but with everything okay my second question i don't know if anyone on the board or, or in attendance knows and certainly i'm not an engineer or a scientist but in in the hydraulic modeling that the fire districts you know, conduct or bring to the table, do those factor in climate change and the potential impacts long term? I don't have a that? definite answer for you on that. My guess is no. Okay. But that I may, I could be wrong. We can certainly find out. I think it would be prudent, again, I, I'm not involved, but I think it would be prudent to not only think immediate term but also think long term sure. here and what changes in rainfall or whatever might do to us um and then my third and final comment um back on the schedule on this schedule um we have a six month moratorium in place with this schedule goes through uh november if i'm reading it correctly So I know, knowing that this is a cornerstone piece of input to our ability to effectively guide future development <coughs> conversations here, it just seems like that moratorium is going to like expire before this big piece of information is done. So. Um, Ashley um, and everybody, uh, this this is this is a huge issue in my opinion. Um, North Tiverton um, is way in arrears um, on their three-year um, report to um, to uh, the State Water Resources Board. Uh, they're required to. Um, up update their uh, uh, information on on their uh, pipe and pumping infrastructure um, on uh, on uh, uh, the the volume and pressure testing that's done um, on the uh, fire suppression uh, uh, um, measurements of water coming out of the hydrants for fire suppression they're way 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 behind and I'm just wondering, and they're also behind, not terribly far behind, on their hydraulic modeling. Uh, it hasn't been updated in three or four years. Um, now that modeling, by the way, is based on protocols that are put together by the National Association that, that, uh, that represents all of the drinking water uh, domestic water um, organizations around the country, and that's called the American Water Works Association. They actually have protocols for how you put a hydraulic model together so that you can run a new project through the simulation and figure out not only can you get the water to the new project with sufficient volume and pressure, 
but how are you impacting the rest of the system? Um, so not having all of this data updated makes me very concerned about what, what's going to happen when all of that gets to Weston and Sampson, and can the engineers do much with it? And the situation, the situation in Stone Bridge Fire District is even worse. Um, and I, they don't even have a hydraulic model. They never have had a hydraulic model. Um, and th that's the only, uh, that's the only way you can really decide um, how a new project is going to impact. And they have a big piece of the water supply for the, uh, for the new development that is being proposed for Sousa Road on the McGinnis and, 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 and uh, uh, the, basically the McGinnis property, which is a huge project and a lot of water. So I'm just really concerned about that, Ashley. I, you know, I, I've been thinking yeah. about that. You know, how do you, how do you even begin that? Because we've had some conversations with the manager, with the managers who basically say, we really don't know. <laughs> you know? And that's a scary place to be yep. when you're talking about a huge project. So I think we'll have a better sense of how to wrap our arms around that after yeah. we have an initial yeah. meeting. Um, you know, I need the people at Weston and Sampson that understand these hydraulic models to talk directly to the people that have them or don't have them and come to some kind yeah. of understanding yeah. about yeah. what exists and what doesn't. We just haven't gotten to that point yet, but yeah. that's we're beginning to... The ball is rolling, and so hopefully we'll have that connection will be made soon, and we'll have better and a yeah. better idea. And I will continue. If you want to put um, this on the agenda and keep it there, I can yes, keep I telling do. you what's go you know yeah. as far as I know what's going on, um, so that you can keep you know keep an eye on that as well. Yeah, let's keep that on the agenda just to get a very very brief update. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe some months there might not even. Be the need there may be update. nothing to say nothing but to say you'll at least have it but there it, so it, i can it, keep it, you it, informed it, as i get information right. and and we won't forget that you know that very important piece of the puzzle is still out there we have a and, and and uh and this board would be very remiss in approving any project until we know that it can get uh water uh in sufficient volume and with sufficient volume and pressure without causing problems elsewhere in the system. Um, I, I, I have neighbors, um, uh, particularly on Dewey Avenue, where I own a rental property, where there are pr pressure problems all the time. I don't have any problem in my house, which is right, right at the bottom right of the hill. There. Uh, but um, has big but time. but up, but up on the top of Dewey Avenue, I know that there are ser serious pressure problems already. Anyhow, enough of that. Um, um, well, if I there, think, I think it it should be brought out in public. I mean, to especially to Todd and Ashley who don't live in in the community that there have been over the years. I mean, pressure problems with North Tiverton, but Stonebridge is constantly breaking down. I mean, so. So that brings us to agenda item H, which is an update of the um, subdivision revisions um, subcommittee. We just created that. I serve on it, Dick Taylor is on it, and Tricia is on it. So, but we don't have anything, we, we haven't seen anything on subdivision regulation, so we don't have anything to report at this point. That brings us to agenda item number I, which is update from North Teverton Business Park Committee. Um, I'm your liaison to that um, particular committee. Um, we have the we have the business park uh, very well under control. We're going to submit the business park to um, to uh, a state program. Um, uh, Rhode Island Commerce has a pro program called Site Ready, um, and they will help determine um, what needs to be done, particularly with infrastructure in the park. Renee, did I get that right? Way back when, it's supposed to be used.
used for the industrial park. I don't know where, what's been happening with that money, but when you start talking about the business park, there's $30,000 to do something. I th thought that was revoked. I don't, I didn't hear that that was revoked. I did. I thought that was too. I thought it was revoked. I, 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 I'm, that's infuriating. You had $30,000. I, I don't quote me on this. Check with Chris, but I believe that he spoke to somebody about this, that they that the money was revoked, but that there's a, a, there will be opportunity for new funding to be applied for. And he was assured so we that... Lost, we lost a $30,000. I don't, I don't yeah, want to no, say that I, because I don't want to give you the wrong information. Yeah. So definitely check with... <coughs> With Chris, before, like I again, I don't want to be giving out the wrong information, but I think that I okay. I am just I, I I find it frustrating that we we had this we had this grant thirty thousand dollars that could have been used for a feasibility study or some kind of study for the industrial park just to figure out what we needed to do the three and to just not use it. Well, I, I think there are some limiting factors there at play. Again, I yes. don't want to okay, speak out of turn, but I think that the committee and the council have discussed the idea that the site ready program through commerce would replace right. that and more than cover that because the, the site ready program will take the, if the application is in, if the property is enrolled in the program, they will take it right. all the way through basically to permitting. Right. So I just. So, but that, is that the site ready thing that's due by April 19th? No, it's a roll. It's an ongoing rolling, rolling program okay. that has okay. funding okay, that's available. Sure. So I don't think there's a deadline there. Um, I think it's an ongoing rolling application okay. process. No, and I, I know. About that. I wasn't sure. And I know they came and spoke to the North Tiverton Committee, Commerce, uh, excuse me, it's run by QDC. It's run by the Quonset Development Corporation. Right. Steve, Steve, Steve and it, Steve. And it mimics their own program, right. which is like a shovel-ready program where they pre-permit sites within the development, within Quonset, so that when people come looking, it's red, it's pad-ready. Yeah, and this so- This is all the stuff that, I, yeah, I, we've gone through. So I, I think I think if the thirty thousand is not available, the idea is to probably try to recoup that through a different grant application, and then use the Quonset Site Ready Program to enroll potentially enroll the industrial park. At which point, the the program sense. basically takes over and takes this as far. There are a couple of different options yeah. about how you can how you do program it. that site. Um, but there are options available and apparently significant okay. amount of funding available yeah. for these types of programs. So, um, yeah, I'm so aware I, of that one, but it's just, I'm just venting at this point that yeah. there was money there that could have been used and was not used, so. So for, for the benefit of our YouTube viewers, the speaker is Renee Jones, the, chair, the chairman of the Economic Development Commission and a member of the North Tiverton and Industrial Park Subcommittee. And, the zoning ones here. and, and a member of the Zoning Revision Committee as well. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Um, uh, so uh, the only other thing I wanted to say about the North Tiverton Committee is that we are still working, I guess, on the, uh, on the uh, uh, request for proposals and scope of work um, uh, to uh, look at, just to look at North Tiverton, not the industrial park, with, with an eye toward economic revitalization. So Again. Any, uh, any questions on that? And comments or questions seeing none um, I think that brings us to the final item which is status of zoning code revision committee and I'm going to call on Tricia because she is our liaison to that committee uh, so we're plodding long plotting is probably a good word <laughs> but um, yeah I mean it's a lot to go through that zoning code it's you know it's kind of a mess we all know that 
Um, but on the plus side, um, we have a few things where we've come to consensus. I'm not going to tell you that what you're going to get is completely written in terms of language. Um, but I think after the next meeting, you're going to start and see things that are sent over to the planning board with the rec with a recommendation, obviously, then for the planning board to opine on and see if they agree or don't agree. And, and some of these are things are going to need to have specific language developed. Um, but I think you'll actually start to see things from us fairly soon, and the idea is to, you know, send them over on a rolling basis um, with the idea of, you know, getting as much done as we can. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Good. Well, that's our last agenda item, so we are ready to adjourn. I'll make a privileged motion for adjournment at 8. 8.35. All those in favor? Well, you don't have to hold on. Oh. <laughs> Privilege. <laughs>